One of the things is when you're trying to explain or understand how to take what it is that you do and make it better is it really involves thinking in an abstract way about a process what you've done and that's what theory is and theory's gotten a bad rap because it, it gets to be very very complicated and we don't like to use it and we don't know how to apply it and what we're going to do in this class is keep it short sweet and to the point okay just like everything else it's kind of the motto is that a theory is composed of things of ideas that relate together and help us try to predict or understand a phenomenon. That's it. So essentially, if you're trying to define theory, it's this. It just explains or describes a set of behaviors. That's it. Now, obviously you can get a little bit more complicated because you have theories that explain individual behavior. You know, how, why did a certain coach do what he or she did? And you, know, you see coaches that just um, go off on the sideline and just kind of, okay, trying to explain how and why they are doing what they're doing. That's a macro, or excuse me, a micro theory. If you're talking about how coaches across the United States put together uh, values that should be embodied by the profession, that's macro. Okay, and so just for us understanding the movement between a small process and a large process coaching literally out there coaching is is doing that it's involved with that sociological imagination it's involved in understanding individuals and society ideas well uh, one of the foremost sports sociologists in the world uh, over the last 25 years is Jay Coakley and in one of his uh, writings and books he talks about the three classes of social theories and you have structural theories which look at big things in society cultural theories look at um, the way ideas are going to be important or not important in the subculture of sport and then interactionist theory talks about you know the the meaning a sport has for an individual the identity of student athletes and student athletes going to college and just wanting to play ball and why that's more important to them than, um, you know, working on you know stuff in the classroom. All right, all these different things. That's what he's talking about. So structural theories. We have two theories that kind of relate to that. One structural functionalism, which is the oldest, and simply says that society is this organism that works together. And so sport is one of the institutions, and it's there because it's positive. Well. You know, sport can impart change to not just society but to individuals. And the coach is hugely important in that process. Positively changing the life of young men and young women. Positively impacting the self-esteem of a community. We've all, we can all think of examples. I, you know, I think of, like I said, growing up in small towns, uh, in Texas especially. You know, the, the football coach was someone that was esteemed and upheld in, in that particular community. And regardless of, you know, maybe the recession that was going on at the time, the economic recession, if you had a, a football team that you could be proud of as a community, you felt good. And the coach was the face of that. Okay, and that, that was a very, very structural, functionalist way of looking at it. Conflict theory is the exact opposite and says that society is not, not this set of interrelated parts, but it's basically shaped by money, economics. And sports are associated with that, and it's about exclusion, it's about exploitation, it's about trying to get as much money as possible, and, and then holding some, especially the athlete, sort of down, and not allowing them to rise to an equal level. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying one is better and worse than the other, that's the thing about theories, is you're going to find that each one is applicable in a different scenario. Critical theories... There are tons of these things, and I'm not even going to list them out. Ethnomethodology, phenomenology, all those different things. So they're kind of loosely grouped as a critical theories that are associated with a cultural way of looking at things. And it basically says that society and sports involve culture and change all the time. And the reason it changes is because there are associations of power. And powers that a coach has can help to influence 
the conversations that we have and how and why we should be doing things and changing things or not changing things, the values we should uphold. All right? And this is something you see a lot of times on, on Outside the Lines, for example, on ESPN, you know, some of the, or, or E60 or HBO Real Sports, some of those investigative magazine type shows in sport are trying to critically analyze. Critical doesn't mean being bad, it means looking at things on an in-depth level. The interactionist is basically, it kind of comes out of symbolic interactionism, which is that we interact with each other based on symbols in society, so the, the understanding of social life that we have. So you walk into a college classroom, you say, hey look, this is a college classroom. I'm going to act a certain way now because it's a college classroom. You know, this is an online class. It's kind of changing our our uh, concept of the class. But nonetheless, when you log on, uh, regardless of when you do it or how you do it or whatever, you sort of shift somewhat into a student mindset. Okay, and that's kind of a that's associated with this idea of those three assumptions that symbolic interactionism has. And this is very important for sports because think of the symbolism in sports. It's just so important. I mean, logos and mascots and imagery and, and the, the confusion and the conflict that they can cause and the misunderstanding, but they can also represent pride and all these different things. You know, the coach is a symbol for a team. The coach is someone who, and like I said, in my experience, symbolizes a community. And so symbolic interactionism through these three simple assumptions tries to understand the identity of an individual, how people interact, the importance of sports, the, in sport, the importance of, of being athletic. You know, I have friends that run. Like, I, I hate running. They like to go out and jog, and they're like, ah, the first couple of miles are the toughest, and then it's, it's a part of who they are, and if they don't jog that day, then they, they're having a bad day. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I can't run a few miles. This is painful to me, you know, I got that stitch in my side, it feels like I got stabbed and I can't breathe and blah blah, but to them, it's something, it's a part of who they are. If you think about CrossFit, you know, it's a, you know, it's not just going and working out, it's a lifestyle. And you hear this with student athletes all the time, is that it's not just, hey, I'm doing 30 hours of my sport, it's a lifestyle. And for coaches... It's a lifestyle. I'm going to give up certain aspects, especially at the professional or the elite amateur level, NCAA, that kind of thing. I'm going to give up certain aspects of my life, my social life, and I'm going to invest totally my health, my mental health, my well-being, uh, you know, maybe my marriage, my life with my kids, all these things I'm investing into this process of coaching. And so so that kind of can, symbolic interactionism or interactions theory can help us understand those very much more micro level things. It's not psychology because without the sport, the coach couldn't do that. Okay, so it's not just what happens in the coach's mind because what happens in the coach's mind is a byproduct of what we call the interactionism paradigm, which is that life influences the decisions that we make on an individual level. And, that, and that's kind of what's going on here. Some things that kind of come out of theory that are important for coaches, small group dynamics, understanding who's going to perform, the climate that you create on that team. Okay, that comes directly out of some of those theories, especially interactionism, that we just talked about. You know, organizational representation, how you, let's say you work for um, an athletic department at a Division One level. Okay, you, you, it's not fair maybe, but you're probably much more well-known than a tenured full professor in engineering or, dare I say, in sport management. Okay, so you are the face of potentially that university. But it's not just that organization. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to represent a community. You know, um, the movie We Are Marshall, Matthew McConaughey, the death of the Marshall football team. Um, and it's got some corny parts, but it's it's a good story. You know, and if you haven't seen it, maybe I encourage you to, to watch it. Or maybe a little bit more close to home through KPTS, which is the KPTS.org, which is the local public um, kind of public television station here in Wichita. Black and Gold was a documentary that they did on the death of the 1970 uh, Wichita State University football team and how that football team impacted the death of those individuals and impacted an entire community. And you really get to see, 
you know, the, that when you're talking about changing a narrative on safety, you know, critical theories talk about changing a narrative, right? Um, Ray Rice helped to change the narrative on domestic violence here in the United States. You know, a coach who gets in trouble or a coach who represents misogyny or violence, they help to influence and change the narrative. Or, you know, uh, you know a coach like Phil Jackson and, and Tony Dungy, um, these people help to change the narrative that to be a coach, you know, you have to be just all shucks from my gut. No, you can be very intellectual. You can read philosophy and apply it to coaching. And then finally, role modeling. I mean, it's, it's the most important kind of basic aspect of I see and I do. When you're dealing with young people, role modeling, whether you're a coach, whether you're a, a teacher, or whether you're a student athlete who works with kids out into a community, role modeling is going to be very, very important.